morning, yoga people. I think I'm live. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, just wanted to start today with a little, uh, a little talk <laughs> about um, the idea of responsibility, and it was just a, um, a a word that I was trying to dissect, um, thinking about um, what is what is my so what is my social responsibility in this moment? And I kind of realized I didn't really understand the word responsibility. Like I knew what re meant, and I knew what able meant, but I was unaware of what uh, the root word of sponse was even supposed to mean. Uh, of course, I have an idea of what, how to use the word responsibility, but uh, to think of what is the origin and what's the real meaning of that. So um, I looked up that uh, root word, you know, Latin root word spons or spawn, and uh, one of the one of the um, translations of that word was um, to bind, which I thought was really uh, to bind oneself to, which I thought was very reminiscent of the word yoga itself, like the the union or uniting or yoking of oneself. So um, that was kind of a cool realization, and then. You know other words that have that um, that to bind or to pledge root would be like correspondence, um, sponsor, which I titled the episode of this, um, and also in the negatory is the word uh, despondent, um, which is a losing of hope or a um, a really a really heavy uh, a really heavy place to be. So um, I was uh, so I was thinking of how this um, idea of responsibility this um, is a way of binding ourselves uh, to the world. This idea of social responsibility, and it's uh, having with that idea. There's this acknowledgement of um, of being bound to one another, and I think if there's anything that we we have experienced through this uh, pandemic is that we are all, we are all connected. We are all bound to each other. And because uh, this is just, is there anybody on the planet that has not been at least, <laughs> at least tangentially re uh, affected, if, if not directly uh, affected um, in their daily lives by um, what, you know, by this um, pandemic. So, yeah, so um, just something to think about, this uh, thinking about our language and what is uh, hidden within it. And um, yeah, so with that idea of our, our um, responsibility to one another and our responsibility to ourselves on the mat, uh, we will begin practice. Okay. So uh, come to a comfortable cross-legged seated position. So what is comfortable going to feel like for you today? So maybe uh, that means getting some padding underneath your hips in the form of a blanket, a block, maybe even a, maybe even a chair would be appropriate at this time. We're really trying to focus on settling the body to create this, this uh, connection to the earth, the sense of rootedness, the sense of support, and then the ability from that support to grow tall, to rise up. You might cross your legs at the ankles, place the hands somewhere on the legs, close the eyes as you are ready. Invite yourself here. So you've already made the, you've already started the spark of the idea to do a yoga practice this morning. So bring intention to this idea. How would you like to move today? How would you like to communicate? How would you like to uh, be in correspondence with yourself throughout this practice? 
And then we'll check back in with our intentions and see how they manifest, see where they start to waver. And then recommit, reassess. Shrug the shoulders up towards the ears, lengthening the sides of the body. Hug the shoulder blades together behind the heart, broadening and opening the chest. creating a, um, a position of openness, of courage, of vulnerability, all at once. Chin might tilt downwards as you lengthen along the back of the neck and continue to grow tall through the crown of the head. Notice any lingering expression in the face And from weeks past, you might consider what the expression in the face may be revealing. Maybe you're holding tension in a way you are not aware of. And if so, by recognizing that tension, is it possible to begin to loosen that grip? To soften the features of the face as we turn our attention inward. Noticing where tension, soreness, pain, blockage resides in the physical body. And then again, by identifying those things, considering what those um, sensations may be reflecting, and is it possible to loosen that grip? With attention, with breath, with the movement of prana, vital energy, consciously through the body. As you are ready, turn attention to breath. Direct breath in and out through the nostrils. Slowing down, deepening each breath. Perhaps transitioning into the practice of ujjayi pranayama. Drawing a gentle contraction in at the back of the throat. Essentially shrinking the valve through which air is drawn in and released out. each breath, letting your consciousness uh, rise with the, um, the flow, the building of the inhalation, and let it ride the um, recession, the ebb of the exhalation. I was really thinking about this imagery of the breath being like waves in the ocean. And I was thinking, you know, about what the ocean is actually doing, what is what the ocean actually looks like. And it's not, 
It's not one wave happening, completing its cycle and receding back and then the next wave coming. The waves are coming constantly, one wave right behind the next. So we can think about ourselves as just one of those waves, riding one of those waves in the vast ocean. Let your consciousness ride the swell and ebb of three more breaths. as you have completed those three breath cycles, please flutter open your eyes. My intention today is to uh, practice um, this bellows breathing later on in class, so I'd like to introduce it now and then we'll revisit, revisit it during uh, the practice of some postures, um, specifically boat pose. Okay, so if, uh, if you've done this before, this is just a good review. Uh, if not, um, then, Welcome to Bellows Breath. So if you think of, or it's also called, I think it's also known as Breath of Fire. These could be, those two could be distinguished as two different things. I um, Tell me if they are, tell me if you know. But um, I, I refer to this as Bellows Breath. And uh, if you think of a bellows, very antiquated, um, antiquated piece of equipment now, but um, most of us are probably familiar with it. So the bellows is, um, something you use to stoke a fire. It presses sharp bursts of air into the fire to oxygenate it. So um, the bellows is like this wedge and then pushes, 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 short bursts of air push through it. So uh, we're gonna do this bellow by pulling in the abdominal, uh, pulling in the belly button, contracting the abdomen to push air uh, swiftly, pointedly out through the nostrils. So um, you can put a hand on your, on your belly, inhale, and then exhale sharply by drawing the belly button in, contracting the abdomen like this. So the, um, the Active, the activation of the breath is more from this exhalation than it is the activation of the inhalation. So the inhale is kind of like the, the air comes in after this rush of air out. So uh, as I said, we'll do that, we'll visit that again later in practice. Okay, hands together at heart center. We will chant OM three times. Exhale, empty the lungs, and inhale for the first of three OMs.
Bow your head to your heart, release the palms to the thighs, and then slowly lift your head as you open your eyes. Okay, we are going to begin with a twist here. So if your legs are crossed, you might switch the cross of your legs to bring the opposite ankle on top. Left hand behind the back, right hand to the left thigh. Inhale, growing tall along the spine. Exhale, beginning to revolve. Shifting around the central channel of the spine from right to left, bottom to top. Consider the movement from the inside of the body expanding outward. Tilt the chin parallel to the floor, taking the gaze towards the back wall, maybe even over the left shoulder. Notice any uh, residue of expression on your face, maybe some insight into your experience, your emotional connection to this shape, to this movement. Take note. Is it possible to slacken any gripping that you might, might be experiencing? Infuse the shape with breath. And as you're ready, inhale through center and little counter twist. Okay, now we'll do the full counter twist. Right hand behind, left hand crosses to the right thigh. Inhale, growing tall, broad across the collarbones. Exhale, and revolve. Drawing from the deeply rooted legs and hips, from that stability, from that support, the possibility of lengthening along the spine. And by creating more length, creating more space to revolve. Maybe gaze goes back, chin stays parallel to the floor, collarbones are broad. Again, opportunity to infuse the, the pose with breath recognizing the ability of the breath to transform the shape. And inhale back through center, counter twist. And we'll come forward into a uh, puppy dog position. So the knees, I, I, I take them a little wider than the hips, almost as wide as the mat. Try the toes tucked or feet flat. Tilt the tailbone up as though you're doing cow pose in the low back. Look forward and then start to reach your hands forward. Reach your upper body forward. You might actively spread the fingers, opening the palms, then begin to ground through the knuckles, press the finger pads down, shoulder blades draw together behind the heart. Again, gaze is forward, chin extends, throat opens, and then chin and chest might move towards or to the floor. Again, infuse the pose with breath. Notice what and where you're feeling. Again, an expression on the face might tip you, uh, tip you off to how you're feeling as we move into this shape. Slowly walk your hands back up and move into a tabletop position so the knees might come directly below the hips. And we'll inhale, belly and chest down, tailbone and gaze lift into the cow position. And then exhale, moving with the breath into cat, chin to chest, tail tailbone towards the floor, belly button towards the ceiling. Starting to introduce the synchronization of breath and movement this morning. Getting acquainted with the spine. And uh, as always, in this very uh, common or uh, frequented uh, flow, an opportunity to recognize the uh, unique experience of your body today on the mat. So where and what uh, 
is the physical experience of these movements. Again, is there an emotional component to these movements? Do you want to start making modifications to, uh, to these shapes, holding in one pose or the other for additional breath, bending the elbows, shifting the hips from side to side or even in a circular motion? And then let's come back to a neutral spine. Okay, take the knees a little bit wider apart. Uh, thread the left hand between the thighs, between the knees, reaching back for the right calf, ankle, or heel. Come to the outside of the left shoulder, left side of the head down, right fingertips on the floor, and begin to twist any deeper into this shape that may feel... Um, Necessary to create more sensation, more areas of interest. So the hips might shift towards the left, the right shoulder might shift towards the left as the right shoulder is, or the left shoulder is pulled towards the right. Slow, deep breath here. Again, this uh, idea that I've introduced before of wringing out the sponge in this shape. So as you inhale, um, the internal organs are, um, the, I, the images, the internal organs are filling with prana, or in the case of the sponge, with water. As you exhale, wringing out the sponge, pulling the belly button in towards the spine. I practiced this uh, yesterday with my knees on a blanket so that I actually found that uh, preferable so if you have a blanket handy you might practice with the knees on a blanket inhale back through center and move to the second side thread the right hand between the knees reach back for the left ankle calf or heel right shoulder on the back uh, right side of the head down and again, start to uh, experience the shape, and then uh, if the experience of the shape needs uh, more uh, intrigue for you <laughs> at this time, you might push the knees down as you shift the hips right, push the left hand down as you push the left shoulder right. And then again, this infusion of the pose with breath. The recognition that every breath is an opportunity for change, for growth, for, um, for observation. Okay, unwind, back to table again, and now bring the left hand between the feet. I'm going to take my blocks to the top of the mat. If you have blocks, you might use them here as you come to a low lunge position with the right knee grounded. Hands on the floor or on blocks on either side of the front foot. And now let the hips really weigh forward. So you're uh, kind of releasing engagement, letting the hips uh, be drawn downward with um, the pull of the earth as the chest continues to rise, collarbones broad. And as you exhale next, we're going to shift the hips back, left toes towards the ceiling, round the spine, chin to chest, forehead towards or to the knee. Breathe here. Opening up, becoming aware of the back of the left leg. As the back of the left leg lengthens, you might engage along the front, the top of the leg, drawing the knee in and up. Janu Banda, as we've been calling that in my class, the knee lock. And now let's flow through these two shapes. So an inhale, 
to bring you forward, hips melt, chest rises, exhale to send the hips back. And again, this idea of moving with breath. Correspondence of breath and movement. Okay, come back to the low lunge. Scissor the legs in and uh, don't let the left knee go uh, beyond the ankle at this point. Try to keep the uh, knee stacked over the ankle. Scissor the legs in to engage them and square the hips and chest towards the wall in front of you. Hands to the front thigh. You might interlace the fingers on the thigh to, uh, to, stack, to stack the spine, to lift the chest, to grow tall through the crown of the head. And now you might begin to melt the hips down and forward. So this might be a gradual movement. So this, um, this pulsation, this expansion and contraction, expansion and contraction working those things simultaneously and then experimenting with tipping the balance towards expansion and tipping the balance towards contraction until you find your Goldilocks pose. So you find that, um, that balanced position that's just right for your body, your experience on the mat today. And once we find that in the lower body, take the arms out to your sides, roll the shoulders back, open the chest and palms forward. Inhale, shoulder blades on the back. As you sweep the arms overhead, you might even look up. Root to rise. Feel that connection, that stability, that support of the earth from which to lift up, grow tall, become expansive. So this idea of binding or being bound to the earth and that being a support system from which to expand out of. Okay, hands to the blocks again. Once more, send the hips back, round the spine, and then hands to blocks, we'll switch sides. Left knee to the padding or the uh, left knee back, possibly to the padding, right foot forward. Melt the hips down and forward. Feel the weight of the hips being drawn downward. Chest lifts, collarbones broad. And with the next exhale, hips back, right toes to the ceiling, round the spine, chin to chest, lengthen along the back of the leg. Maybe there's this engagement along the front of the leg, kneecap lifts, Janu Banda, outer hip back as you push through the sole or to, uh, through, through the <laughs> base of the right toes. You might even put a hand there to create resistance against the um, the uh, toe, the toe knuckles, no, the toe, the bottoms, pads of the toes. So push the hand into the foot, foot into the hand. And now flow with breath again. Inhale, hips forward, chest opens and lifts. Exhale, moving the hips back, round the spine. Again, uh, connection, correspondence of movement and breath.
Okay, let's again come forward. The knee over the heel, scissor the legs in, squaring the hips and chest forward. Hands to the front thigh, interlace the fingers, prop up the chest. And then that uh, pulsation, the, uh, the balance of extension, expansion, and contraction. By uh, contrast, those things happening simultaneously. Draw in, expand. Draw in, expand. Feel the support of the earth beneath you. Uh, and from that support, begin to grow tall along the spine. Arms at the side, shoulders roll back, palms forward. With an inhale, arms sweep up, gaze might go up. And from this, this tether, this, uh, this binding, this uh, connection with the earth, we're able to lift up, lift up, root down to rise. Hands back to the blocks and place the uh, right leg back, blocks off to the side and our first downward facing dog of this morning's practice. Hands down and forward, hips shift up and back. Maybe a ceremonial walking of the dog. Noticing what and where you're feeling along the back side of the body, in particular the back sides of the legs. And to build up some heat, we will commence our push-ups. Inhale, shift forward to plank, possibly coming down to the knees as you exhale, lower down. Inhale, push back up, still can be on the knees. Exhale, hip shift back to either child's pose or down dog one. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, push up, exhale back two. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, press, exhale, back three. Inhale, forward, exhale, lower. Inhale, press, exhale, back four. Last one, first set, inhale, forward, exhale, lower. Inhale, press, exhale, hip shift, up and back five. Right foot might inch towards center as the left leg lifts straight up and back. Three-legged dog, hands down and forward, hip shift, up and back. Knee and toes point straight downward as you use the strength of the inner thigh to lift the left leg higher. Look to the top of the mat before lunging the left foot to the top of the mat. Come up into a higher version of the lunge. Knee melts to over the heel, back inner thigh, lifting back leg straight. Hands to the hips, draw back through the sides of the waistline, elbows towards the ceiling. Lift up, feel the connection of the earth, scissoring the legs in and pulsing out. Pulse, <laughs> the expansion and contraction. Arms at the sides, palms face forward, inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, open the chest towards the left wall, arms down to the height of the shoulders. Inhale, forward, arms overhead. Exhale, open left two. Inhale, keep the lunge as you, as you turn the chest forward. Exhale, open the chest towards the left. Inhale, center three. Exhale, open left. Inhale, center four. Exhale, open left and hold. I choose to stay here. Or take the left hand to the outside of the right thigh. Sweep the right arm over the right ear and lean back. Creating this uh, right lateral bend. Right side lateral bend. Maybe look up, notice expression in the face. What's it telling you about your experience? Is it possible to soften your experience? And then hands frame the front foot. <laughs> Send it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward to plank, lower the knees down, tilt the tailbone up, reach the chin and chest forward. Exhale, lower down knees, chest, chin. Slide forward onto the belly. <laughs> Take your legs straight back. Place the feet hip width distance apart. Ground the feet, engage the legs. Jaw new bandha. Lengthen back through the tailbone. Lower abdomen in and up. 
Interlace the fingers behind the back, elbows towards the ceiling and in towards one another. Secure the shoulder blades. Inhale, peel the chin and chest away from the floor. Reach back with the knuckles, forward with the heart. Open the chest. Use the strength of the back body to start to open, to continue the opening of the chest. Sides of neck back, crown of the head lifts. Keep the feet grounded. Again, <laughs> notice the face. What's your face telling you? Is it telling you you're gripping, you're resisting? Is it possible to soften? Soften the edges of the mouth skyward. And exhale, let it go. Right cheek to the floor. Arms forward, big toes touch, heels wind apart. Head heavy, neck soft, arms heavy, upper back broad. Return to the breath. Ride the wave of each breath as you come to reconnect with the breath, the swell of each inhale growing larger, the uh, ebb of each exhale more complete back into the vast ocean. Chin on the floor. Point the toes, flex the legs, interlace together. Base of the big toes might come to touch, interlace the fingers. If you can remember, place the opposite thumb in front, elbows towards the ceiling, shoulder blades on the back. Inhale, lift feet, thighs, chin and chest away from the floor. Use the strength of the back body. Backs of the legs, low back, upper back to rise away from the floor. Again, take note of the face. <laughs> Soften the edges of your mouth upward. Continue to breathe for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly lower down, left cheek to the floor, arms at your sides, big toes touch, heels wide apart, head heavy, neck soft, upper back broad. Return to the wave of your the waves of your breath. Again, this imagery of riding the waves as just a part of the vast ocean of breath. Chin to the floor, tuck the toes, lift the kneecaps, lengthen the tailbone, hands at your sides, exhale and push up. Inhale in the plank, exhale back, downward facing dog. Inhale forward, exhale lower down, inhale push back up, this can be done on the knees, exhale push back one. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back two. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back three. Two more second set, inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back four. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back five. That was kind of six, wasn't it? Inhale, right leg lifts straight up and back, knee and toes point down, hands down and forward, hips up and back, lift with the right inner thigh. Look to the top of the mat and lunge your right foot forward, long stride. Hands to the hips, draw back through the sides of the waistline, lift up. Arms at your sides, shoulders roll back, palms face forward, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, right arm opens, chest opens to the right, inhale, back to center. Exhale, open right two, inhale, center. Exhale, open right three. Inhale, center. Exhale, open right four. Inhale, center. Last one, open right and hold. Either stay here, right hand wraps to the outside of the left thigh, left arm by the ear, look up, lean back, keep the knee bent. 
five, soften the face, four, three, two, and one. Frame the front foot, step back, DFD, downward facing dog, inhale, forward to plank, knees, chest and chin, tailbone towards the floor, roll forward, ha, ah. <sighs> breathe, <laughs> breathe because I can't talk yet, <laughs> okay, <sighs> bend the knees, flex the feet, reach back for the ankles, if you can only grab one ankle, start with the left, draw the <laughs> ankles and knees in towards one another, so they're shoulder width distance apart, your chest may already be considerably lifted, that kind of depends on the ratio of your arm length to your torso length and even your femur length. Okay, from here, we're going to just tip onto the left side. So it's a, um, it's a side, side bow here. So um, this is similar to another stretch we do. I wouldn't, it's not exactly the same experience for me. It might be might be more similar for you, but uh, this experience of pushing the left shoulder blade onto the back using um, the, the floor. So uh, not a lot of pushing of the ankles into the hands required or um, inherent to me in this shape. You might uh, work with engaging that or not. But I'm, my primary focus for us here is to uh, connect with the left shoulder, maybe even the left uh, upper intercostal muscles. I'm just gonna hold here for some breath. Letting the pose bring about some sensation, uh, the realization or recognition of tension in the shoulder. Might be lying dormant there through this recognition, possibility of acceptance and moving forward. You are seen and we are ready to move on, grow from this moment. Sh left shoulder, I'm talking to you. Okay, come back to center. If you have a grip of just one ankle, grab now the right ankle. Roll to the outside of the right shoulder. And please, if this is um, painful or so uncomfortable that it can't be held, then get some, um, get some support. I, I noticed that rolling off my mat is a little harsh, uh, so it feels like it's bruising. So um, if you, if uh, it would feel more supportive, more uh, helpful for getting you into this correspondence with the right shoulder, you might put some padding underneath uh, there or even the outer hip or the right side of the head. So I'm thinking uh, the name of the, the class today, I'm trying to name the classes ahead of, ahead of uh, time so that if they're easy, more easily searched on the, the YouTube channel, but I also feel like there's some benefit to uh, naming the classes before I, I teach them. So I named this class um, Sponsor Growth. So again, with this nod to the, um, the, the word spawn or uh, spawned, Spawn, yeah, uh, this binding or pledging. So how are we um, sponsoring growth in this moment through our practice? So there's this recognition of um, <laughs> this connection, this union with the body. And only through seeing, only through this recognition are we able to kind of uh, release that which is not serving us, that, that which we do not want to carry forth into the future? Okay, back onto the belly, 
hands back to the floor, tuck the toes, exhale, plank position, possibly on the knees, inhale and plank, exhale back, downward facing dog, you might walk out that low back, push the hips up and back, lengthen the low spine, get reacquainted with the dog before our third and final set of five push-ups. Inhale forward to plank, possibly coming to the knees, exhale lower down, inhale push, Exhale, hips move back one. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back two. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back three. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back. I'm losing count four. Last one, inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press. Exhale back five. Reacquaint with the dog for one final, one final visit. Hands down and forward, hips up and back. Release the weight of the head and look forward. Start to make that slow and conscious journey to the top of the mat. Might be little baby steps, shifting hips from side to side. You might use the time that it takes me to walk forward to practice your uh, jumps, <laughs> practice your hops, and then everybody eventually arriving at the top of your own mat, feet hip width distance, connection between the feet and the earth, conscious connection. Bend the knees, release the upper body forward, and take your ragdoll or waterfall pose. Take hold of our opposite wrists, forearms, or elbows. Invite movement into the shape with this, uh, with this intention to soften, this intention to release to the earth. Maybe shifting the weight from foot to foot, right to left, front to back. Maybe swaying the arms from side to side. I often find it helpful to shake the head, yes and no. Releasing through the neck, the upper back, the side ribs, the low back. Again, checking in with the face. <laughs> Okay, fingertips to the floor in front of you, push or onto blocks, push the feet down, lift the hips up, lengthen along the backs of the legs, actively lengthen the crown of the head downward, inhale, fingertips to the shins, halfway lift, exhale, fold forward, two more, inhale, lift halfway, exhale, fold in, last one together, inhale, lift, and exhale, fold. Arms sweep out, up and overhead as you rise to stand. Look up, reach up, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center and into your mountain. Arrive in this pose of strength, stability, connection with the earth. Again, this idea that the mountain is is one with the earth. The mountain is made up of the same things as the what is beneath it. Rising up out of the earth, growing tall, growing broad, immovable. So embody the mountain and begin to notice how this, um, these shapes, how the asanas may begin to affect the emotions of the moment, the activity of the mind. Reconnect with the waves of the breath. Reconnect with intention. Okay, we're going to 
gonna come to a tree pose. So uh, stand on the left foot. Again, create a conscious and uh, wide connection between the left foot and the floor. Root down and then rise up. So as you extend down into the floor, engage the left leg, hands to hips, right knee, right toes, turn out, right foot to the inside of the calf or thigh, or option to uh, take lotus leg with the, right, with the right leg, with the right foot. Okay, widen the right knee out to the right as you lengthen the tailbone down and square the hips forward. Hands to heart center. Find a point to focus your gaze. Soften the eyes. Arms can stay at the heart or arms can grow tall like the branches of your tree. So take some, um, take some liberty with your, with your pose, with your practice. So uh, you might experiment with some different things as you hold this tree pose today. So you might take the uh, right wrist with the left arm, with the left hand, lean the upper body right, lean the other way, taking hold of the opposite wrist, opposite hand. Hands can interlace, uh, wrists to the sky, shoulder blades on the back and down the back. So this is a great pose to demonstrate this um, balance between uh, rigid, between strength and uh, suppleness. So, or um, <laughs> this balance between strength and flexibility. Um, so we have to have that, uh, that rigidity, that uh, strength of the left leg to connect us to the earth, to feel that support. And then from that support, the opportunity to grow tall, root to rise. Okay, whatever you're doing, stop doing it. Right foot back to the floor. Okay, maybe a little invisible hula hoop, one direction and the other, a couple of times. And we'll do our opposite foot. Right foot down, left knee out, hips and chest square forward. Left foot to the inside of calf or thigh. Press foot into leg, leg into foot. Find that stability at your trunk. Extend out through the left inner thigh, contract through the left outer hip, tailbone down, lift through the front of the pelvic crest, hands to heart center. Find your drishti, your soft focal point. And as you're ready, arms reach. Experiment again with these, these options, these variations. Maybe right wrist clasp the right hand, clasp the left wrist, lean right. Left hand, clasp right wrist, lean left. Interlace the fingers, opposite thumb in front, if you can figure that one out. Push the wrists up, shoulder blades on the back, shoulder blades down the back. Feel the earth rise up to the foot. Push the foot into the earth. So there's kind of, they're in opposition, but supporting one another. Rising up and rooting down. Release the arms to your sides and Step the feet hip width distance apart, maybe a couple of hula hoop uh, rounds, one direction and the other. Staying true to my hula hooping roots in 2020. Okay, turn <laughs> my hula hoop roots that were established in 2020. Turn your toes out at about a 45 degree angle. So this, uh, I'm going to have us 
go down into a squat. If this is problematic for your knees and you already know that, then you can just uh, approach the squat from the, the earth. Otherwise, hands to heart, lift the chest, begin to bend your knees in the direction of your toes as you sink the tailbone towards the floor. Arms can come in to the inner thighs. So if the heels are lifted up off the floor, we're trying to, in this pose, we're, uh, we're trying to train the heels down. So get the heels weighted, the tailbone weighted. And in order to do that, it's helpful to have something under, under them. So if, if the floor is not under the heels, then slide a blanket under there so that you have that connection of something beneath you to, to direct weight down into. So the arms, if possible, come to the inner thighs, hands to prayer, broaden across the collarbones, widen out through the elbows, and then as the elbows widen into the legs, hug the legs into the arms. So as the elbows widen, the chest lifts. As the knees hug in, the tailbone sinks down. It's also possible uh, to practice this with uh, a little padding or height underneath the hips in the form of blankets or blocks. And we'll do a little bind from this shape. Left arm out to the left right arm up to the sky, and then if possible, wrap the left uh, arm around the front of the left leg, elbow uh, attempting to get around the shin, and then the left palm is at the outer hip facing out. Right arm up and reaching back and clasping or using a strap or a strap substitute to extend the length of the arms to create that connection or that bind. And from that bind, from the hands clasping, expand out through the elbows, broaden across the chest. So again, this idea of uh, expanding from that, uh, that bound point. Okay, right arm out, left arm up. Wrap the right arm around the front of the right shin, left hand reaches back, clasp or uh, use an arm extender, right shoulder moves forward, left shoulder draws back with the hands clasped, widen the elbows, widen the shoulders, broaden the collarbones, gaze might go up. Okay, unbind, unwind, and um, push the hips up and walk the inner feet together. So I, I'm just inspired to uh, go up into a little arm balance here in the form of uh, crow pose. So if, um, we're just going to do this briefly, if you like to use the perch for your crow, uh, then bring a block underneath your feet, inner feet together, knees wide and apart. Keep your hips low, tailbone tucked towards the heels, reach the arms forward, lengthen the spine, fold in. Either choose to stay here in this forward folded squat with the heels lifted, or slide the hands back below the shoulders. Shoulder blades secure on the back, gaze moving forward, then squeeze the arms, the legs into the outer arms. Start to shift the weight of the upper body forward as you lift the feet up off the floor or the perch. Squeeze the legs into the arms, draw the tailbone towards the heels, belly button towards the ceiling, towards the spine. Attempt to breathe in this shape. And as you're ready, come on down. You can, you can try that uh, a couple of times if you'd like, or you revisit that after practice, but that's, that's all I'm taking the time for now. Okay, slide your uh, mat to a wall, an uninterrupted wall space, if you will. Come to lie on your back. And rest here a moment. Take your arms out to a T, your arms at your sides. So re reorienting here, coming down onto the floor. As the earth rises up to support you, 
Feel all the spaces where your back body connects to the earth. And notice, uh, are the eyes open? Do you want them open? Is it helpful to create a deeper connection with the back body if the eyes are closed? And check in with face. <laughs> the expression there might be telling. Check in with uh, the feet, the hands, the large muscles of your thighs and buttocks. As you, come, uh, as you become aware of tension, as you meet the body where it is, is it possible to soften or release some of that tension moving forward? Bring the inner feet together. To open the eyes if they were closed, reach your arms straight up to the ceiling. So we will re-engage the bellows breath. So remembering that that's a quick, uh, conscious pushing out, push, drawing in of the abdomen to push breath out through the nostrils. So as you exhale, um, as you exhale next, not yet using the bellows breath, Peel the head, neck, and shoulders up away from the floor to point the fingertips toward the toes. Draw the belly in, squeeze the legs together, and exhale, curl, inhale, curl back. Let's do four more like that. Exhale, and inhale back. Exhale, inhale back. Exhale. And we're going to hold this time. Squeeze the legs, lift the heels, and attempt the bellows breath in this Ardha Navasana half boat pose. For 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heels down, arms down, head down. Relax, feet can widen apart, arms to the side, shoulders tuck under, palms open. Return to the waves of the breath. So one, uh, one challenge I noticed with the Bella's breath is this uh, st uh, strong <laughs> contraction of, the, um, of my jaw and um, a grimace appears on, on my face. So. Uh, if you notice that in coming into the half Navasana, which we will do again, uh, attempt the bellows breath with a softer face. And this time we're going to come straight up into it. So squeeze the legs, reach the arms, exhale, chin and chest, reach towards the toes, lift the heels up, and we'll do 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heels down, shoulders down, arms down, head down. Feet to the floor, feet and knees hip width distance apart, lengthen through the tailbone. Again, reach up. Peel the head, neck, and shoulders up away from the floor. Articulate your back body off the floor. If you can, come up with the feet grounded without grabbing the legs. Also, you can grab the legs to come up. Okay, legs together, hands cupped behind the thighs. Draw the shoulder blades onto the back, collarbones broad. Tuck the tailbone slightly towards the heels and lift the shins or, yeah, parallel to the floor. Push the thighs into the hands, pull the hands into the thighs. 
Choose to stay here or arms out to the sides, palms face up. Choose to stay here or straighten the legs. Choose to breathe, nor <laughs> breathe in your regular fashion or bellows breath for 20 seconds. One, or 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Feet down and back to, back to your back, arms out to a T. Feet as wide as the mat. With an exhale, knees can fall to the left, keeping with my custom left side first. Inhale forward, exhale, knees to the right. Windshield wiper of the legs, side to side, corresponding movement and breath. One more visit to the right, and as you inhale, bring the knees back to center. So if you have a block handy, you might take a block and place it between the inner thighs for bridge pose. Feet are hip width distance uh, and parallel to one another. Arms at the sides of the body, push the feet down, lift the hips up. So if you were with me last week, there's this idea of as the hips move up, you're, uh, there's this idea of the block moving downwards. So the block as though extruding like Play-Doh <laughs> uh, down towards the floor. So inner thighs are moving down as hips lift up. Hands interlace behind the back, tuck the shoulders underneath the chest, lifting the vertebra of the upper back away from the floor, back of the head, on the floor, neck long as you tilt the chin towards the chest. Breathe into the body, opening up the fronts of the legs, the fronts of the hips, the abdomen, the chest. Arching away from the earth. Slowly lower the hips down, untuck the shoulders. You might remove the block as you walk the feet apart and let the knees fall together. Hands onto the body, one to belly, one to chest. Become aware of this external expression of the breath in the body. And with that information, can you fill the, uh, the body more fully with breath? First the belly expanding, then the chest with the inhale. First the chest lowering, then the belly with the exhale. Okay, let's do one more bridge pose. Option to uh, take a bound bridge or um, go, come up into a wheel at this time. Uh, this, will be, uh, this will be followed by our shoulder stance. So uh, if, you, if you like the block, use the block. Before you come up, you might think about pushing the fingertips into the block to create that sense of extruding or pushing or uh, spiraling the inner thighs away from the face or when you come up into the bows down towards the floor. Arms at the sides, push the feet down, lift the hips up, 
Inner thighs roll downward. Interlace the fingers. Tuck the shoulders. Tuck the chin. Breathe the pose. Rooting down again here to rise. The connection of the feet into the floor, giving you a space to push from, giving you support to lift the hips higher. The shoulders rolling in and pushing down, allowing the chest to expand and lift. Hips lower, arms untucked, remove the block. Hands to the belly, hands to the chest, knees fall towards one another or together. Awareness of breath inside and out. Okay, so next, uh, the next shape is going to be a shoulder stand. So again, with this idea of the title of the class in mind, this sponsor growth, um, how are you going to approach this pose? How are you going to uh, connect with your experience as it is today, your past experience of this pose, to uh, promote something new, some new experience in this shape, whether it be a deepening of the expression of the pose or a deepening of, um, a deepening of acceptance of where you are. Um, so uh, is it the supported, um, as I call it, the Iyengar method of doing this with the, the blankets underneath the shoulders, uh, using the wall to come up, or are you, um, are you feeling uh, more connection um, to this uh, shape uh, with the shoulders on the mat? So, um, <laughs> so um, <laughs> you know, liberate your practice. Uh, do, do your practice and come up into some form of shoulder stand. So we might uh, enter shoulder stand from uh, halasana or plow pose. So this hips over the shoulders, um, the shoulders tucked underneath the chest in whatever means you use to tuck the shoulders. I interlace the fingers behind me, just as I would in that, um, just as we did in that belly down back bend, hugging the shoulder blades together behind the heart, just as we just did in uh, bridge pose. And then hands go up the back. If you're using the wall, feet might go up the wall in transition to shoulder stand. Chin towards the chest, gaze up the body. And this is one where I notice um, uh, a good connection because uh, I'm looking, the, the, po the gaze has us looking up our own uh, looking up our own bodies. So um, there may be some recognition here of imbalance uh, that you see in the expression of the pose that you may not feel in the experience of the pose. So maybe one uh, hip is uh, forward or lower than the other. And how can we use this, um, this information, this external expression to inform how we move with, from within. A little bit of troubleshooting to, um, for the, the purpose the, uh, of balance, of growth, thighs pushing uh, away from the wall as the tailbone length, lengthens up, heels over the hips. 
hips working over the shoulders, shoulder blades on the back. And as I've said in uh, previous weeks, uh, this one, because Halasana is also an inversion, I think that uh, coming down into Halasana, coming down into Palau Pose, and then back up into Sarvangasana shoulder stand uh, is not too jarring. It's not uh, disorienting. So uh, if you need a break from shoulder stand and you consider uh, Plow Pose to be somewhat uh, more supportive or restive, then you can move between the two. Also, as we visit this pose more regularly, you might start to explore variations. Maybe um, one leg comes down at a time, out to the right, or if the right leg can come out to the right, or the right leg can come straight up over your head, and then the left leg out to the right, then left leg straight up overhead. Lots of variations once you start to um, gain uh, strength and um, stability in this shape. Lots of variations. Eventually, we'll all move back through plow pose, legs back to the wall. And I like, I often like to transition from plow pose into this, uh, what's often called, I think I've heard it called deaf person's pose. So the knees bend in towards the shoulders, like cupping the sides of the head, so that it's kind of very much muffling uh, the ears. And then hands, I like to once again interlace them or uh, take the arms back by the feet. So the knees can start to lower down towards the floor. And you can kind of gauge how low the knees are by pressing the feet down to lift them higher or uh, as the uh, back body uh, allows, the knees can go lower. Okay, as you're ready, Swing the legs back to the floor. And if you're up on blankets, you might uh, scooch the hips up on the blankets so that the shoulders are now down off of the blankets and just the hips are on the blankets. Do, we're gonna do our fish pose again to open up the throat. So elbows uh, bent, uh, fingertips spread, palms face one another, elbows down, chest lifts, attempting to bring the crown of the head, the top of the head, to the floor as you curl the chest, open the throat. So I really see the throat opening here as the um, really countering the shoulder stand. As you're ready, tuck chin to chest, back body to the floor. We're moving very, uh, very, very much towards the end of class here. So if you'd like your mat away from the wall, take that time to move away from the wall. And one more time, lie on the back. Draw, uh, draw the right foot, is, right foot is on the floor, left knee hugs in and up towards the left shoulder. Half wind removing pose. And then grab the foot, half happy baby. Inside the foot, right hand, outside the foot, left hand. Push the foot into the hand, pull the knee down. Uh, push and pull. Right foot stays on the floor, or you can experiment with the right leg extending out. Right leg can just passively rest towards the floor. You can actively push the calf and thigh downward. From here, transition to a uh, figure four shape, right foot on the floor, left ankle crosses to the right thigh, widen the knee away as you draw the right thigh in, interlace the fingers behind the thigh or in front of the shin. Stay in relative stillness here or rock the shin from side to side. Turning the gaze inward. Exploring the low back, the left outer hip. We're 
Right foot down, left foot down, right knee in and up towards the right shoulder, hug it in. Halfway to removing pose and transition to half happy baby. Grabbing the inside and outside of the foot, pushing the foot into the hand and pulling the knee downward. Again, stay in this variation or extend the left leg straight. Actively pushing the back of the left leg down or passively letting the leg extend and sink down. So finding a, um, a supportive, a, a balance between effort and release, sponsoring this growth state. And it is not only effort that is sponsoring growth, and it's not only um, passivity or observation. It's you know finding a balance between both, and the balance uh, the balance is a balancing act. It's it's never in exactly the same place, the exactly exact same expression uh, each day. Okay, right, uh, left foot back to the floor, right ankle crosses, left thigh in, interlace the fingers. Come back to the figure four, targeting the right outer hip. Stillness or movement, or both. foot down, right foot down, and both uh, knees up towards the corresponding armpits. And then grab the outside edge of the feet, half, full on, happy baby pose, side to side, rocking one knee to the earth, then the other. Inner feet together, interlace the fingers, widen out through the inner thighs, lengthen through the low back, feet press into hands, arms pull taut, heads to the arm bones might curl up away from the floor as the back of the head stays heavy and rested on the earth. And finally, legs together. Bring it in for a self, some self-love. Give yourself a big hug. Wrap your arms around the legs. Take hold of ribs, the wrists, forearms, or elbows. Squeeze it in. Tilt chin to chest, forehead towards or to the knees. Squeeze the leg, round the spine, tuck the tailbone. Pull in. Pull in, pull in, contract, get small, get tight, get dense, and then expand out. Complete contrast as we pull in, now we expand. So uh, we are moving into our savasana. So what would feel supportive? What would feel comfortable uh, for you at this time? So uh, maybe you uh, want to go to the legs of the wall getting all the necessary props uh, together for that. No need to rush here. I find that the more, um, the more intention I put into setting up this pose, the uh, more easeful it becomes to enter this state of um, passivity, like the, the wave moving back into the ocean, the experience experiencing the ocean, really, um, 
So uh, whether that be a, a rolled up bl blanket underneath the knees, or uh, you can even take a child's pose, or I've been in places with my own practice where the most uh, supportive and comfortable thing has really just been to um, lie, on, lie on my stomach, maybe a blanket, maybe an eye pillow. I'm thinking about all of the, <laughs> all of the ritual and effort that goes into um, putting uh, my children to sleep. So uh, give yourself some of that same, um, that same ritual, some of that same intention for bringing your body to rest in this, in this shape of your choice. As you find that shape, I invite you first to once again become aware of those um, spaces where your body is making contact with the earth. A recognition of that connection and that support. And from that rootedness, that heaviness, Now begin to become aware of uh, the skin as it intermingles with the air surrounding you. Feel the edges of the physical being intermingling with the air around you, expanding into the air around you as though exuding a soft glow, an aura. Expression of inner light.
and a ripple of movement back into the fingers and toes as you reawaken the, um, the arms and legs start to re-engage with the breath drawing more air in with your next inhale Perhaps a sigh with your next exhale. If your legs are up the wall, slide the heels down. If your legs are out in front of you, bend the knees. Extend the left arm along the left ear and roll on to the left side, transitioning from our corpse pose into a fetal position. Press back up to a supported seated position. Once again, feeling the earth. Extending down into that support to rise tall along the spine. Bring hands together in front of heart. We'll chant Om one single time to close the practice. Exhale, excuse me. And inhale from. Oh. Thank you, each and every one of you, for your your um presence this morning with the live stream or at your connect your later on connection with the recorded class uh, thank you for your devotion to the practice um, the practice of um, union with the mind the mind and body the union with our deep connectivity to one each one another uh, the light in me uh, recognizes and bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you guys. I hope there weren't, weren't any problems with the stream today. Um, as always, let me know if there are because I would like to fix them. Um, yeah, I have had some really great uh, correspondence uh, recently with some of the um, some of the students, some of you are talking to me every week, and I, I love that. Some of you um, have reached out on occasion. And uh, yeah, so please be in touch. Um, I, I would love to hear from you. Just let me know that uh, you're watching and, and or practicing. Um, and um, yeah, uh, let me know if there are things that you want to uh, see more of in the practice or see less of. <laughs> so um, yeah, reach me, um, reach me at the Athens Public uh, Gmail address uh, that should be available from my website, or um, uh, reach me by phone if you know me like that. Um, yeah, I hope. Um, oh, <laughs> Athens has art. Hi Nancy, good to see you. Good to see you are here again. Um, yeah, cool. Cool to. Uh, know that you're out there and I um, hope you all have a lovely day. Um, it's always a great way to start my week. So that's my send off. <laughs>